Hey guys, how you doing? Mr. Little here. Today I'm going to be taking you through a video on how to make a barnwood accent wall inside your house. In my barn here I have a big pile of old rough sawn 2x4 lumber and it's not structurally sound because it's gotten kind of punky over the years but it is really nice and kind of uh, kind of rustic looking so I'm going to clean it up with some stain, maybe some sanding and uh, I'm going to put it up on a wall and we're going to see if we can make something kind of cool out of it. I'm going to actually take you in to my barn show you this pile of wood. It doesn't have to be anything special. This whole stack of 2x4s and big lumber here is the wood that I'm going to be using. Now these boards were originally about 16 feet long which is just way too long for the area I'm working in. But I don't want them all to be the same length so what I've done is I've cut them all between 9 feet, 6 feet and 3 to 4 feet long. And I have that because I want it to be kind of a random pattern. And the other thing that's cool about these boards is that a few of them have this wild live edge on them still which means that there's actually some bark on there that this this board didn't get made perfectly flat and square now i'm actually going to keep that live edge and i want that to be kind of the uh kind of the rustic look of it so i'm going to include that in my wall and kind of make that maybe a little bit of an accent piece all right the next step that we've gotten to here is the staining part of it now i went with the stain because i want to see the wood grain of this of these boards still i want them to still look like wood rather than paint which will just completely cover them but i've gone with four different colors of stain i have a vintage aqua which is that blue one right above it is the traditional pecan it's kind of more of an orangey color above the traditional pecan is just a natural one i didn't put any stain on that board at all i just want the natural wood color and on the top is the, called a briar smoke. And I just used these stains right here. And I applied them with just a, like an old t-shirt rag. And I, I did it kind of differently on all of them. Because I want some of them to be darker and some of them to be lighter. And what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to sand these all down. Because I want them to look even a little bit more rustic. Um, like these ones have kind of have the right look going. But my whole garage here is kind of filled with boards now because I have them all painted and all separated into different lengths and makes kind of a mess, but that's, that's all right. It'll be worth it. I, I'm hoping it's worth it. Now, another thing I've done with these boards to make them a little easier to work with was I ran them through a joiner. And the reason I ran them through a joiner is just so I could get their edges really nice and straight. So it'd be easy, easy, easy to get them stuck onto the wall and they line up nice. So I'll give you a quick video on how this thing works. Underneath here, underneath this blade guard, there's a blade that rotates there. And this fence here keeps my board at a nice square angle. So I just run that through on edge, run my board through there on edge. And it takes down all the lumps and valleys off the edge and they are very nice and straight after. Now I'm to the point where I'm going to take the sander, I have a palm sander here, and I'm going to palm sand the top of these even with the stain on it, just because I don't want it to look so freshly stained, I want it to look kind of rustic. Um, I was kind of surprised at the level of abrasiveness that I found to work best with sanding this. I'm using an 80 grit sandpaper, which is a pretty, pretty aggressive sandpaper, but it seems to work the best for taking down taking down the humps and bumps off the top to the level that I want it. All right, so I've sanded a lot of these boards so far. These are all done, stained and dried and sanded. I just have a few more of these dark ones to sand, but I want to show you what the before and after looks like of them getting sanded. So these ones right here have not been sanded yet. And they're just really, really dark, holding a lot of stain. Now these ones over here, these ones, these have been sanded. So I sanded them down until I got a little bit of that natural wood popping through to give it kind of that weather, weathered, rustic, worn look. All right, I think I finally have all these boards all sanded down the way I want them. I think I have uh, enough of that vintage, weathered, rustic look I'm going for. 
Last step before I bring them in the house and start installing them is I'm going to lay them all outside and I'm going to blow them off once more to really get all the dust off of there and uh, get them cleaned up, clean enough to bring in your house. One of the bigger part of the job so far was bringing in all of this wood once it was all sanded and stained and ready to go and all the prep was done, bringing it in here right into the work area. Okay, so I brought all this wood in here as I told you. And this right here is the wall that we're going to be putting the barn wood on. It's just a plain wall. There's no doors. There's no windows. There's only one outlet. And we're going to just try and spice this thing up. And we want to do it kind of simple and easy. So what I'm going to do here, these are two by four boards. So they're pretty thick and they're pretty heavy. So what I wish I could have done was maybe rip them uh, in half. So they are a little bit thinner of a board. But I didn't really have the resources to do that and it just the timing of it didn't work out so that's actually a step that I did skip. So being that they are a bigger board and they're kind of heavy, I'm going to be really conscious about making sure I'm getting them sunk into a stud. I'm going to face, face nail them with uh, a 4 inch screw but I want to make sure that the back of that 4 inch screw is really in a stud good. So what I've done here is I located the first stud on this wall and I'm just going to measure 16 inches off my first one that I found all the way down the wall because in theory we should have a stud about every 16 inches so I'm going to mark them out. Now I'm not worried about the fact that I'm writing on this wall because it's going to be covered with this barn wood and there's going to be screw holes in it, in it um, afterwards anyhow. One thing I am going to do though is I'm going to leave that outlet and I'm gonna list, I'm gonna cut that notch that in, so it's gonna be kind of a sunken in outlet. But I am gonna remove this piece of trim here because I want my barn wood to sit flush all the way down to the ground. So I'm gonna pry that piece off, and hopefully we won't miss it. So one of the things I've recognized that I want to do is I want to I want to mark out this whole stud line from the top of the wall down to the bottom, so I can literally just uh, start just start screwing these boards in without even thinking about where the studs are. So I'm going to mark them on the bottom and on the top and then I'm just going to scribe a line from the top of the bottom. So I'm going to use this six foot, six foot board, I guess it's a little less than six feet, but I'm going to use this board to connect those two dots that I made from the top to the bottom as I ran these all through the joiner so they should it should all be real square boards. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is kind of the final step. I think um, I'm going to just start randomly grabbing either nine foot, six foot, or the shorter three to four foot sections of boards at totally, uh, I shouldn't say totally at random. I'm going to try and keep it to a pretty even ratio, like one to one to one to one, because we have the four colors. So I'm going to do my best to kind of keep the, the ratio similar but it's going to be a random pattern of colors and lengths. I'm going to start down here in the corner. Figure the bottom is probably the easiest spot to start because then I don't have to hold boards up. They can rest on the floor and we're going to get after it. So I have to notch around this outlet here. So what I did is I took this board and I just did some measuring to see where it was going to be. I'm going to leave a little bit of extra room on the sides because these boards are so deep I don't think you'll notice that. And if we ever have a wider thing that we're plugging in with that outlet being recessed back into the wall, I'm going to want a little extra room. So I'm going to go cut this out with a jigsaw. Alright, got it notched out. We'll see if it fits. up here it went pretty smooth uh, I think planing those boards down really helped just having everything with a nice level edge nice straight edge on it 
and uh, everything seemed to work out pretty good. I uh, really all that's left is some cleanup. So that's how uh, you could take some old barn wood and turn it into a spicy looking accent wall. <laughs>